Hey y'all, this is Joseph from Action X3000. I got you another movie review today. I'm a little bit late on this one because it's been busy, been working on a lot of school work. Um, apologies again, this is not the video version. Um, we have everything set up. It was just uh, um, after seeing Captain Marvel, which is what this movie, what this movie review is. Um, I had other plans afterwards. George was supposed to come on and um, do the re review with me, and um, we just didn't have the time afterwards. So, doing this audio base, hopefully in the next review we do, we'll be back to video base. We're still working on that, and, you know, we're, we're, it's a little bit rough here in the channel right now. We're I'm going for a rough patch right now in terms of timing, but, you know, we'll hopefully get through that. Anyway, the importance is, I'm here to review Marvel Studios' Captain Marvel. And I gotta say this. It's been a while since the last MCU movie for me. Um, obviously, in terms of comic book movies, since Ant-Man and the Wasp, we had Venom, we had um, Aquaman, and of course, Into the Spider-Verse, obviously. And so it's been a while since the last MCU movie, and I definitely felt the time passage. Um, Ant-Man and the Wasp came out in July, and Captain Marvel just came out in March, and there's been such a big gap of time that, for me, it was kind of a little bit jarring to get back into the MCU space, because this time last year, I was in the midst of re-watching the entirety of the MCU to obviously prepare myself for Infinity War. I'm not doing that this year, because um, it's still fresh in my mind. I don't ha I don't necessarily have to rewatch everything again, so that works out in my favor. So, that's the only thing that, like, when I was going into Captain Marvel, it does hinder a little bit of my ability to review this movie since, like, going into the... And thankfully, um, this was another prequel since to Anna and the Wasp, where it means it takes place before the events of Infinity War, where, in this case, for Captain Marvel, it's way further removed from the majority of the MCU um, continuity, where the majority of the films are. So, thankfully, that did help me out a little bit into understanding this new section of the MCU. But, regardless, let's get ju jump into this. Um, of course, obviously, we're starting with spoiler-free. If you haven't seen the movie yet, if you're still on the fence about it because of the trolls, because of the, all the controversy. Well, it's not really controversy. It's more like people... Um, I don't know why this is happening. I really don't. I'm just... I'm going to chalk it up to DC fanboys or fangirls, even still after Aquaman's success. They're still... You know, looking at Marvel like, oh, they're 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 still you know they're still doing great. We gotta put them down a peg or something. I really don't know, um, but you know, I'm not gonna comment on that. Um, but anyway, okay, so back to Captain Marvel. Um, spoiler free. Overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I really did. Um, this movie, I had little to no expectations for it, and of course, obviously, with this being an MCU movie, you expect there to be some sort of expectations for it. Um, I just knew. With by the trailers, you know the trailers were weirdly cut, even for a Marvel movie. I don't know why it was kind of weird. Maybe I I really don't know. Even after seeing the film, I I don't really know why they would market it differently in terms of the other movies where those worked out. And not to say the Captain Marvel trailers were bad. They were just paced and done differently than other MCU movies that we've seen recently. So, and either way, based on Marvel's track history, I think since. And man, and you can argue a little bit further than before that. Um, they had a really good track record in terms of their movies. So I, I absolutely knew this wasn't going to be a bad movie. And you know, with Brie Larson, you know, being the main lead, uh, um, Samuel L. Jackson coming back, Clark Gregg coming back. You got Jude Law in there. You got Ben. I, I can't. I hate when I butcher last names, but I, I do. Middleson or Mitchelson or something. Apologies for that. Um, I really. I knew going into this movie, I was going to enjoy it, regardless of any pre-expectations I put into this movie. Um, prior to that, um, I talked to my friends, um, especially George, about this movie. It's like, this movie is going to be, at the end of the day, good. It can only go up from there. Because, again, I really highly doubt this movie was going to be bad. And, thankfully, going out and leaving the theater, like, I was really pleasured with the movie. I really enjoy the movie. Is it the best Marvel movie ever? Absolutely not. It... In my current rankings, and remember, just because, you know, it's a little bit lesser down on the list compared to a lot of other movies. Compared, um, I'll say this, number one, there is 21 movies currently in the MCU. So, just because it's a little bit lower does not mean it's a bad movie. It's just that the rankings, like, personally for me, um, I think I put, I, no, I don't have the list pulled up on me, but I definitely, it was number 13 on my list. So it's still a pretty good movie. And I 
could not I, I don't know why Ant Man the Wasp was so much better than this. Um but okay, so enough about the ranking stuff. Let me actually get to the actual movies myself. I'm actually I don't know why I'm tiptoeing around the actual movie because I don't think I know where to start. Um obviously the movie's taking place in the nineties, which ironically is when I was born, so I was kinda a little bit of a nineties kid, but I was, but I'm also an early two thousands kid, so this movie definitely did seem to fit for me. And it was it was weirdly thing about how Brie Larson um, Carol Danvers, or if for like funny story. So when I got the Funko Pops for um, Captain Marvel, the green suited Captain Marvel pop was named Beers, which was confusing to me. Like why would why, why is this a typo for Mar- um, from Funko? Was this a mistake? And then when after after watching the movie, it's like oh okay that that makes sense. And I didn't really put the pieces together, nor did I pay attention that much. Um. But no, I definitely enjoyed Brie Larson's interpretation of Captain Marvel. I really did. Um, obviously, in the trailer, she was she sounded stiff. She didn't sound, you know, very... I don't know why she didn't put any passion, in my opinion. But I'm like, well, this is an Academy Award winner um, actress, so there, there, there's something to be more here. And thankfully, her performance was well done. There was sort of like a weird of a... I don't know how to describe it. Her character, you know, obviously... Um, or she she goes for a, a transformation um, throughout the movie and going into God I really don't know how to how to phrase this correctly. Um, when seeing her at the beginning of this movie, being having pieces of her personality prior to her being Captain Marvel still be there, but obviously she had her own b- b- weird brand. There we go, weird. She was weird, but it was an enjoyable, fun, loving way. That I really enjoyed. It was something. Every MCU hero has their own quirks. Her quirk is being a little bit weird than a lot of other pe- a lot of other heroes, in my opinion. And that's what I definitely enjoyed from this. Um, her dynamic with um, um, Nick Fury, the young Nick Fury, was such a brilliant move. I really enjoyed that. I could see an entire movie with them. They they have such great banter because at the end of the day, they're both soldiers. They both seen their fair share of battles, which connects them, which grounds their their relationship in such a great way, and their unique ba- their banter really played off very well. You know, Nick Fury being the straight man, being this young rookie Shield agent, compared to this half human, half Kree alien warrior, and it's like I don't know how it just it just really worked for me. And honestly, again, I would I would love to see more of them, and hopefully, maybe we will in another Captain Marvel film if we get that, but. Uh, honestly, I really did enjoy their um, their connection, their 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 buddy cop routine in a way, in a matter of speaking. Um, who else was in this movie? God damn it, I already forgot. Um, Jude Law. Um, I really loved. I really enjoyed Jude Law. Um, I, I've seen a. I, I when I was younger, I see a, I saw a lot of Jude Law uh, from the Sherlock Holmes movies, and then after that, I haven't seen him in a while. And then recently, with Fantastic Beasts um, two, I got to see him again in his album Dumbledore. So it was kind of a slow burn to get back into the Jude Law. Atmosphere, and I really do love. Him. He's a really great actor, and him playing Yon. Actually, wait, I can't. I can't even pronounce the name. God damn it! Um, his character in the movie, which was like for some reason, like when when we were going through the whole marketing cycle for the Funko Pop, like I said, I don't know. At one point, he was Yon Rogue, who I never fucking heard of before, and then there was the Marvel. It's like, well, who is this guy? And well, I'll get to that in, in the spoiler section. Um, but Jude Law did such a fantastic job playing his character. Um, I really did enjoy him. Um, he had a really good, a little bit of a good banter with, um, with um, Captain Marvel. Not as good as Nick Fury, but, you know, th- they were still really good. Um, getting to see Agent Coulson again now. I'm a big Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan, so for me, I it's, it's not been that long since I've seen Agent Col- Coulson. It was like last May since I last saw him. Obviously for the mo- people who just see the movies, they they last saw him in The Avengers, which was 2012. So for the movie people, it's like, holy damn, Clark Craig is back as Agent Coulson after seven years. When in reality, for the, re- for the hardcore MCU fans, it's only been like, what, seven, eight months? So I'm not pointing that out. But, uh, but you know, I'll, I'll get to Agent Coulson's role in the movie, which... Um, a little bit of a spoil isn't that much. He's not in that movie in the movie that much, but uh, it was still enjoyable seeing him. Um, the villain, um, Talos, um, Ben Mas said uh, again. I can't. I, I'm trying my best to try and avoid spoilers here, but um, I will say this: I I previously seen, seen him, the actor in Rogue One, which uh, ironically he also played the villain. So when um, so him playing another villainous character, um, I will say that he did a very unique job i i'm really trying to be careful here not not trying to say what well, he did a really unique performance um 
in his character, and I, I honestly really didn't enjoy it. Um, Maria and and Carol's and Carol Danvers' um, best friendship, goddamn, was just so like I felt for them. Like it felt like something me and my best friends would have in terms of their, of a relationship of a friendship. And honestly, I really did enjoy their friendship when we get to see them interacting um, throughout the movie. And it's like, God damn, this is, I don't know why they, they absolutely nailed this. It's like, they are actually friends, even though these are just two actresses just working off each other, but there's such a chemistry there. And, um, you, okay. Speaking, uh, I gotta, gotta give a shout out to the real MVP of the movie, the real star of this movie, ladies and gentlemen, goose stole the show. Um, I am a cat person. I was a dog person before 2010 because my mom brought a cat over and I was not a fan of him. And then now in 2019, I am, I love my cat. So getting to see a, some cat representation in the MCU was very, very, um, very happy for me. Um, I really did enjoy Goose as Goose is his own character and Goose is a very good point in spoilers, so we'll get to that in a minute. But honestly, Goose stole the show. I loved every scene he was in. He was so cute. He was so adorable. And when I got home, I, I literally just hugged my cat for like a good hour, which he did not enjoy. So um, that was a piece. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, also, I did, I got to respect this. This isn't a spoiler, but um, I don't know why most action movies, most MCU movies nowadays, they have to like give you where they are in the world, obviously, so you can keep track like of the locations and stuff like that. Um, they reuse the same text font style from the Guardians movies, which is actually cool to keep the to keep the universe connected. Um, and they u- reuse some asset, assets from that movie, too. And, I, I, well, they use a lot of stuff from Guardians, which I'll get to in the spoilers for a second. But, uh, okay, so I think that's it I, I, I want to say about spoiler. Overall, well, spoiler free. I'm really out of it today. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, <clears throat> it's a really good, mar- a really good movie. Is it not, it's not the best, the one of the top tier movies, but it's a really enjoyable movie, a fun two hour picture, a uh, really good way to get, a, get the tastes back in when Endgame obviously comes around next month, which I'm fucking hyped for. And, um, overall Captain Marvel, really, really g- great movie. Please go check it out. And now to switch over to spoilers. Okay. So your last chance, if you haven't seen Captain Marvel, please turn away and go watch the movie. Otherwise... Proceed now. I'm gonna say this. This movie gave me two twists I didn't expect, and the last time I I said twist for an MCU movie was Iron Man three, and you know how we all know how that panned out. But this one was actually pretty enjoyable. Um, we're gonna start with the first one I mentioned before on Talos the or Talos, Talos because Talos sounds stupid with the Thanos. Um, Talos, goddamn, it was such. A perfect, I don't know how, like Marvel is always getting these very secret, very indiscreet messages out there in their movies. This one was the lesson, never judge a book by its cover, where the scrolls obviously coming up the comic lore, coming out there and looking out their appearance. You can tell like, oh, these are the bad guys. And the movie, like they play with that notion. It's like, and then, and when we got to the part of the movie where like we, we see Talos confront our heroes, the way he's acting the way he's talking to them was like, this doesn't seem like a villain. At first I thought he was playing it like similar to an Ultron where it's like Ultron was evil, but he was still a very joking, funny Tony Stark X character. So I thought it was, this going to be the same for Talos. And it's like, no, it was so surprising to see Talos. Talos wasn't the bad guy. And it was like, well, it, well, pretty much the MCU version of the Kree was always like, they're the bad people. They're, they're really, a extreme sort of group, an alien race, you know, obviously from what we saw in Guardians 1, if you've seen Age of the Shield, that kind of also backed up the theory that the, the Kree aren't, aren't really good people. They're not the best people in the world, but they're not obviously saints, and, you know, they're, they've always been like this murky, dark force out there, and, you know, it was like the Clash of Two Weevils, you know, the Skrulls and the Kree, I, I thought that was going to be the premise, and it's like, getting to that point in the, this movie was like, seeing Talos and his Skrulls not really act menacing. They just they just have their own plans. And the plan was they don't want to take over the world. They don't want to like infiltrate Earth. They just want to find their own home. And it's like, oh my god, this is something completely different than I wasn't even expecting. Um, uh, th- and so Ben Mickelson going from I I, 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 I know it's not Mickelson because now I'm confusing him with Matt Mickelson from Doctor Strange. Uh, Matt, 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 oh, god damn it, I butchered the name. God damn it. Um, 
So seeing Talos go from being viewed at this villainous angle throughout most of the movie and then going at this point onwards to being like, he's just this quirky guy who's, you know, he looks like a bad guy, but he's just, uh, just a good person, just an, just another um, being in his speech. He's just looking for a home. And that makes sense. And seeing when we got to the spaceship scene near the end of the movie where he had to reunite with major a good amount of his people and his wife and his daughter, it's like, you really fell for him. It was like, wow, this guy's not the bad guy. And that was so weird because the movie marketing made it sound like, and of course, through our general knowledge, through the actor's pre prior history, you assume like Talos is the bad guy. He's going to try to infiltrate Earth. And it wasn't. And they did such a good job with that. I don't know how they did it. I didn't even fucking notice anything, which was surprising for me. But anyway, um, so that was one of the big twists that I noticed in the movie. And the way they catapult him at the end, we'll, we'll see in a minute. I'll, I'll talk about it in a moment. Um, then the other twist, Jesus Christ, I have no idea how many times the Tesseract has shown up in the, any of these movies. Like the Tesseract is the very common Infinity Stone that's always in every one of these movies. So it's like, we're still tying it in back to the Infinity Stone thing. It does make the Tesseract's history a little bit more complicated in a sense. Well, then again, we didn't, we never, we never knew what the Tesseract was doing from when Howard Stark found it to when... Nick Fury gave it to Selvig for his research prior to Avengers. And to see the Tesseract again, obviously the last time we saw the Tesseract was being destroyed by Thanos in Infinity War. So getting to see the Tesseract again and having its tie to um, Ca Carol Danvers becoming Captain Marvel in a sense, it, it was kind of ingenious to put that in. And, you know, kind of once again serve as another MacGuffin, even though at this point we, there's no more MacGuffin since the MacGuffin has already been used for, you know, the decimation. But uh, what am I saying over here? Um... No, no, that was a really interesting twist. I thought, oh, it's just another glowing cube thing, you know, in the in the MCU. And like, oh, no, that's a Tesseract. So that was honestly another thing that I wasn't really expecting. Because after Infinity War, I was assuming that they were done with the Infinity Stones. Obviously, they'll play a role in Endgame, most likely. But it was like the next two in-between movies we're going to get. It's like, no, they're just going to focus on the characters, not focus on some sort of MacGuffin. And I, I wasn't expecting that for Captain Marvel. Um, I'm trying to see what else some spoilers section um the whole the way they started this film in terms of their pacing and like trying to unravel how carol danvers because we know as people like she was carol danvers now she's this kree warrior named veers and now she's coming back to earth so how will that pan out how is she going to learn the memories how she's going to remember her past it took a little longer than expected um to be completely honest to, to you it, was, it all played in with with um the revelation that the scrolls aren't at least this group of scrolls aren't that evil I'm um, getting to see that pan out. Um, it was a bit different. I don't think it was the best way they could have showcased it. Obviously, this wasn't a full-on origin story where we saw her in a normal life and then going all the way to becoming Captain Marvel. That wasn't the typical origin story. This was when we begin the movie. She's already technically the warrior. She's not officially Captain Marvel yet. She's just Veers. Then we still get the flashback, which isn't a bad way to demonstrate her story but it was just for at least for me it was like a bit different and a little bit they could have paced it a little bit 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 um better in my opinion so i'm sorry for saying a lot of bombs uh, I, I literally saw the movie three nights ago and um, i'm still hung over from a lot of sushi i ate afterwards so i'm trying to remember uh, i got bits and pieces over here uh, oh yeah agent colson um well yeah so agent colson honestly as much as i love clark Gregg, i don't think th th this movie like I, I enjoyed his moments in this movie. I love seeing him back on the big screen again, you know, where he belongs. Um, but honestly, his role in this movie was very minimum. It didn't see... I honestly thought Agent Coulson was going to have a little bit... Like, I knew he wasn't going to be the starring role. I knew that. I, don't, I knew he wasn't going to be front and center. But at least I thought he was going to be a little bit more playable, a little bit more important towards the finale. And he wasn't, sadly. That did suck, but it was it was still fun to see Clark Gregg back on the big screen. It was still fun to to see him again, um, on the on that format. So that's my opinion, obviously. But you know, obviously, getting to see him and uh, Nick Fury in their younger days was a very interesting treat. It was a very good treat, and you know, honestly, I could I can get some more of that. Mm, trying to think, trying to think, trying to think. Goose, honestly, again, such a steel, 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 scene stealer. And I got a little bit spoiled about the nature of Goose for a Funko Pop spoiler. Thank you, Funko Pop. Um, that he was an alien. Honestly, that was a really interesting angle and getting to see him. I remember when we started seeing the, the Nick Fury Goose means and the second trailer, people were assuming that, um, 
oh, is, is Goose the reason why he loses his eye? I'm like, ah, no. Uh, I, I don't know, like, the, but the more I look at it, like, the scratch marks, all that, it was like, well, maybe there's some validity to this, but I don't think they're going to do it. And then I was wrong. Um, but, the, the I mean, it does play, p- play it to the carrots that Nick Fury was not always as super serious, super soldier-esque um, type of S.H.I.E.L.D. director. He did have a very goofy, childish, you know, beginnings. And then it's like, well, he had the ball fall because he he's going to eventually be the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, you know, so having people who hear the story, oh, how did he lose his eyes? Like, oh, he just got scratched by a cat. No one would take him seriously. So that honestly worked out. It was a little bit of a joke. It was a little bit of a retcon, kind of. But it was like, it still played into the story. And I, I found it amusing. Um, the final battle sequence was really enjoyable. Getting to see Captain Marvel become Captain Marvel, embracing 100% of her power was like such a badass moment. It was a showcase of, you know, people be- going all out, going fully becoming who they are. It was such a powerful moment. Um, yeah, but the ending left is, left us in a very ambiguous place. Like, you know, obviously <clears throat> Captain Marvel takes place in 95. Obviously Avengers, Endgame, doesn't take place till more than 20 years later. So what has she been doing for those 20 years? You know, she left earth with Talos and the, and the mini scroll and the scrolls to find their, them a home. Um, Nick Fury, obviously we know he became the director of shield, uh, has all sorts of other adventures after this point. And, you know, I'm, I'm actually really curious, you know, they left Jude Law's character alive at the end. So it's like, that was really interesting. I'm like, God damn, I want to see this character again. I, I love Jude Law so much. And I, I wonder, I wonder how he'll play thing. Um, oh, oh, another thing I forgot to mention: they brought back two Guardians characters for this movie. And honestly, to be completely honest, I feel like it's another, it's similar to Agent Coulson, where it's like overall in the grand scheme of things, I think this is just being part of a larger chess piece for Captain Marvel's, like at least her own solo film series. Because um, Korag, I think that's his name, um, he was there for like I think three minutes, serving as one of the Star Force. Um, team members and then that was it we didn't we, we saw him in some battle scenes which is cool again uh and ronin was just there for like maybe three minutes two four minutes at least as like well we're good the way they they set him up at the end was like yeah we're gonna see ronin again so it's like okay that'll, that'll be interesting to see um ronin's origin story play out throughout the, the captain marvel films if there's going to be a second one which i, I do think there, there's going to be captain marvel 2 at some point down the line i don't know when we're still waiting for <laughs> dr strange 2 but um yeah so and obviously the the post credit scene seeing uh, oh uh, last thing before I get to the final the final review, um, getting to see, ah uh, goddamn it, um okay this was kind of a little bit stupid the the very last shot of the movie where it was um Nick Fury in his office, you know talking to Colson about the whole some of the events of the movie, and that he was uh, typing in his computer like the initiative, like the protector initiative. And then it was a little bit stupid that how, um, Carol Danvers plane had Avenger on it. It's like, okay, you had to give an origin story for the Avengers title. It's like, so Captain Marvel in a way was the birth was the real first Avenger. Um, Captain Rogers is not going to be happy with that. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's all the spoiler stuff. I can, I, I'm not, I'm coming to mind right now. I'm, nothing's popping in my head right now. I could be wrong. I could have missed something. I probably did not miss something. Who knows? Overall, I really, this movie was such a blast from start to finish. I really enjoyed it. Um, I can't wait to rewatch it again when it comes on DVD, whenever that is. Um, in terms of the, of, um, as being a standalone movie, did such a great job. You know, also as in terms of the connective movie with the, the rest of the universe did a, did a really fantastic job using characters from all over the MCU for, um, Carol Danvers origin story. And I really did enjoy this film. And, and now I remember the le- very last thing. It would be I would have butchered my review if I never mentioned this at all. Getting to see Stanley's two tributes, the the opening MCU logo, I was like, my feet are clapped. My feet are actually clapped during that. I was like, they did such a great job honoring his legacy and his memory, and then seeing his cameo. It, it, it made me sad that he's not he's no longer with us, but. The characters he's created will obviously, you know, his legacy will live on for many more decades to come. And, I, and you know, I'm, I'm really happy about that. And overall, Captain Marvel, my recommendation, definitely go see it in theaters, you know, when you can, while you can, when you can, you know, whenever that is. Um, 
yeah, go see Captain Marvel. That's all my my, my review saying saying that. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please like the review. Um, share the review. Um, please like us on tw- follow us on Twitter to be up to date on stuff we're doing. And I will see you guys soon. And go higher, faster, further. No, higher, further, faster, higher, first. F- f- fuck it. <laughs>